Today's question. Today's question is from David, and the question is about running. Harley, I notice you don't speak much about longer runs, i.e. marathons and ultras. What are you looking at? Why are you doing this now? Are you making a video? Yeah. Why? What? Oh, oh you're fucking... You're fucking addicted. I've got, I've got to do the videos, man. Why? Because I've got to do it. No, you said that you... People gonna... ask me the questions, I've got to no, do the No, you said... No, you don't. You I said don't. that you're going to have a break. No. And you're going to do your book. I'm going to do 10 videos a day. Dali, right. no. Shh. No, no, no. Wait. Hey, no, honestly, you have to stop. I need help. You have to do your book. <laughs> I need help. And... So the question is... Sorry, interruptions. Just chicks, you know how it is. Where was I? Harley, do you feel the longer the distances like the marathon and ultras aren't healthy or maybe you don't have the time to train for the longer distances? I would really like to know your thoughts on the advantages and disadvantages of all the different race distances. I've been running for about three years and still find the half marathon to be damaging about 50% of the time and the marathon has been damaging 100% of the time. I've been thinking it depends on the individual and unfortunately this 49 year old individual is having problems with long distances. Alright, so bottom line, we've got someone who's been running for three years, which is not a long time. I mean, it's not a long time. If you've started running late in life and you're wanting to bust out crazy fast marathons and half marathons and you're training, like if you just start banging out 150 k's a week or whatever, then yeah, you're going to have some big problems. It's not because running's not good for you, it's because you haven't had much base and now you're overtraining. You're basically just overtraining. So it, it's an it depends answer. I learned that from Doug Graham. It's an it depends answer. Depends on the person's history, depends on their goals, depends on like their lifestyle. Are they going to bed at like, you know, six o'clock in the afternoon and getting up at six in the morning, getting twelve hours rest every single night? You know, who's doing that except for the Kenyans? So a lot of people aren't gonna live the lifestyle they need to live to be the person they want to be. So if you're not getting enough sleep, then you're not getting enough human growth hormone release, you're not gonna be able to recover, and you're just gonna be flopping. You're gonna be flopping and it's gonna suck and you're going to think running's not good for you. So what I'd recommend if marathons or half marathons are giving you issues, you've got to just focus on the shorter distances, like the 5Ks or the 10Ks, or take up cycling. Or look at why you're getting injury. Is it because you're like me and you have bad posture when you're on the computer and you've you hurt your stomach muscles and doing a crazy ab exercise or whatever and you're recovering from that? There's so many factors. you always got to look at other areas in our life besides running. What's our posture like? What's our stretching like? Are we getting enough sleep? Are we eating enough calories? Are we using caffeine to keep us going? Are we running on adrenaline? Are we training too hard versus training smart? So they're, they're, they're the, all the questions we've got to ask ourselves. I can't just say yes or no. You've got to look at some detailed lifestyle options there. Why don't I focus on uh, doing ultra marathons? Well, because I'd smash my legs off. I've got the cardio, the VO2 max from cycling, but... You can't just jump over from cycling to running in a couple of months just because you think, oh, I'll, I'll do 24 hour mountain bike races. I can do a 100 mile race and no, do no worries. It's like, it doesn't work that way. If I did a 100 mile race, I'd have no legs left. I'd literally just I'd be walking on my stumps of my knees. I'm 34 years old. I've, I've only started running three years ago and I only do two kilometers a day on average. So you've got to build up slowly over time. So in another five years' time, then yeah, I'll, I'll be cranking out some ultra marathons, but until then I'm going to stick with the 5Ks, the 10Ks, the half marathon, and a couple of marathons here and there. But nothing like Karnstein. You know, these elite runners, man, they've been running for 20 years, and when we try and match what they're doing, we're going to get disappointed. We're going to get owned by the tarmac. So you've got to build it up slowly. Give yourself 10, 20 years before you're really dominating. And if you've started too late in life to be an Olympic whatever, then it doesn't matter. It just that you just deal with that. If you want to be a gun kickboxer, you've got to start when you're five years old. You've got to start when you're 10 years old and train for 20 years. And then you then you start dominating what we see here in, in Bangkok. I live across the road from Lumpini Stadium, which is the world's most famous kickboxing stadium on the planet. And people, I talk to people, when they start training, I started training at five years old. I started training at seven years old. I started training at 10 years old. How old are you? I'm 27. I'm 30. I'm 32. These guys have been training you know, 15, 20 years just banging it out. 25 years sometimes. So, and then you have Farang that come over here and try and do like a, a one month's training and wonder why they get stress fractures in their shins. So we've got to understand that 
you can't just jump into something and be disciplined for a couple of years and think to, to own it. It doesn't work that way. So running takes decades to, to build it up. Decades. Give yourself 20 years. So that's why you want to start today. And build up slowly, slowly, slowly. Every year, build it up slowly. Add 10% every year and just build it up over time. So in 10 years' time, you're doing pretty well. Like Mike Arnstein, you know. Guys put in the work. In 1995, when I was smoking bongs and eating Big Macs, Mike Arnstein's out in the track doing 5,000 meter races, doing intervals in the rain and the cold. I'm sitting inside playing the Super Nintendo. So you can't compare yourself with people being working harder than you and for longer than you. You just got to do the best you can with what you got. So running distances, back it off, back it off. If in doubt, always train less versus training more. Back it right down and give yourself 5, 10, 20 years to get up there. Look at Lance Armstrong. He trained for 15 years, full time for 15 years before he won his first Tour de France. 15 years he trained to win his first Tour de France. 15 years. People forget that. And then Lance has finished 13 Tour de France's. He only won seven. And the other six, he got his ass kicked. So people just, people don't understand the whole, the work that you've got to do. Cadell Evans, what's he, how old is he now? 32, 33, 34? Training for 19, 21 years before he won his first Tour de France. People just forget that. People just want this 30-day program that's going to revolutionize their life. So I applaud people for getting fitter and getting healthier, but understand it takes time. You've got to put the work in and make it part of your life and keep having fun because when it's fun, you take care of motivation. And don't be a slave to the, the number on the scale or the number on the clock. Use these tools to help you, but don't be a slave to it. Don't let these numbers determine your level of happiness in the day. That's the worst thing you can get into the habit of. I know so many runners who go, oh, I'm... I'm um, X, Y, Z pounds, oh, I can't have a good day today, or I can't have a good race today. It's like bullshit, man. It's used in your head. It's like Roger Bannister, the guy who broke the four-minute mile, first man ever. He ran up his coach that morning and said, I can't run today, I don't feel good. And his coach, Frantz Stamford, the drug superstar back in the day, said, no, Roger, you will run today, and you will run your best, and then we'll see how you go. So he did set history. So often we make things in our head bigger than they really are, but that's another topic for another video. So bottom line, train smarter versus training harder. Give yourself five years, 10 years, 20 years before you're really up there in terms of achieving your personal goals. The bottom line, get out there and have fun every day. Thanks for watching.